capital city, the land of tea, the tube and theatre. Welcome to London Calling, the monthly cheat sheet for every Broadway buff about what's happening on the other side of the pond. Later, we'll talk to British export and stellar Slytherin Alex Price. But first, which shows are the Brits getting into one of their infamous queues for? The buzziest production on the Avenue, aka Shaftesbury Avenue, is famed director Marianne Elliott's gender-switched company. Stephen Sondheim and George First Tuna stars Patti Lapone alongside Rosalie Craig and is already a front-runner for the 2020 Best Revival Tony Award. Watch this space for news of a main stem transfer. Not to get too ahead of ourselves, a favourite for the 2019 Best Musical Tony is Anais Mitchell's Hadestown, helmed by Rachel Chavkin, currently playing at the UK's National Theatre and due at Broadway's Walter Kerr Theatre in the spring. Also announced for New York is Tina, which will land on the main stem in the fall. Adrian Warren is simply the best as Tina Turner in the West End right now. We're additionally keeping an eye on that Vanessa Redgrave led The Inheritance, and also noting that everybody's still talking about new musical, everybody's talking about Jamie, the true story that follows a teen drag queen who overcomes prejudice to step into the spotlight. Meanwhile, the show that has industry insiders buzzing is Tudor Takeoff 6, which has the six wives of Henry VIII taking to the mic to tell their tales, remixing 500 years of historical heartbreak into a 75-minute celebration of 21st century girl power. It's been selling out across the UK and is returning to London for a 16-week season at the Art Sitter January through May. Next stop, off-Broadway? That route worked a treat for Conor McPherson's Girl from the North Country, featuring Bob Dylan's songs, which has been repeating its London triumph here in the Big Apple. The special relationship is alive and well, at least with theatre. Thumbs up to Sophie Ocanedo, presently appearing as Cleopatra opposite Ray Fiennes as Antony in Shakespeare's classic At the National. A real-life snake wraps itself around her during her, spoiler alert, death scene. Four milk snakes alternate the role, and as some thespians might be able to relate, can't be in the same room at the same time as then they try to kill each other. Thumbs down to Kit Harrington. Winter is here. He is once again on London's boards, this time in True West through February the 23rd, i.e. once again not on Broadway. Harrington's got real theatrical pedigree. Ten years ago, he originated the role of Albert in War Horse at the National Theatre and transferred to the West End. However, he's yet to make his Great White Way debut. We're beginning to think you know nothing, Kit Harrington. What's wrong with New York, we ask? Please headline in the Big Apple soon. This month's look at a particularly British theatrical tradition focuses on holiday pantomimes. Also known as pantos, they're family musical comedies, often starring former soap stars and boy band members. Staged in every city up and down the land over the Christmas season, cross-dressing and audience participation are staples of the genre. Panto actually has its roots in classical theatre, and also both the 16th century Commedia dell'arte and 17th century masks and music hall. Lesson learned? And next up, we're joined by ultimate Slytherin, Cursed Child's Alex Price. Alex, thank you for being the inaugural interviewee on London Calling. My pleasure. No um, pressure. No pressure at all. Let's talk about Broadway, because you were born in Manchester, Manchester That's United right. supporter. Absolutely, yeah. For me, growing up, like American, New York was just this mm -hmm. magical, faraway place. Mm -hmm. When did you sort of first come across sort of the concept of Broadway? Do you remember? I know, just, I just knew it as like a really long street in New York City. Um, I didn't even know it had theatres on it. So was that later when you went to drama school? Was that no, no, no? When they said do you want to take Harry Potter to Broadway, really, genuinely, that yeah. was like I was like, oh, so oh, that's the thing. You obviously you get Draco in the West End. Yeah, that's incredible reception. How was it when you made your Broadway debut? That was mad. That was mad. I don't really remember much of it. It was just mostly like keep your head down and don't screw this up. It's been amazing. The audiences are incredible. Was it different on Broadway? Are the audiences different on Broadway than they are in the West End? Yeah, certain things land. Certain things land differently. Probably a little bit more comedy to be found between Draco and Ron that me and Paul have found here, which is kind of really fun. You take on Draco Malfoy. How do you even begin to approach such an iconic character? Jack's script was amazing from the first time I read it. I didn't really know... When did you read it? Uh, were you involved in the I was in workshops? involved in the final workshop, okay. of which there were four. So you're talking like a good four years ago now. But Draco's journey was always really clear, really clear to me. 
and really, I, I was like, I know what I know what I'm going to do with it. So when did you first get the wig? <laughs> did you then, at that moment, think I'm now owning Draco? Yeah. Because spoiler alert, not your real hair. No. Funny that. No, that's that's all people talk to me at the stage door as well. I like sign goes to and they they look at me and go, oh, well, that's, oh it's not the same. It's a shame, isn't it? And I go, oh, that's are the fans well. different though? Either side of the Atlantic, are the fan how they approach you at stage door? There's more fans at the stage door here. Okay. Um, it's a concept, I think it's isn't more it? Of a, it's more of a thing yeah. here. Um, and actually, in London, there was a lot of Americans at the door already. Right. But I think a Harry Potter fan is a Harry Potter fan. They're but there are Harry Potter fans, and then there are Draco Malfoy fans. Mm -hmm. So we're in a Slytherin set mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Let's do a bit of a dive on that, because if one goes online and Googles Draco Malfoy, yeah. and I don't know if, if you've ever talked to Tom Felton about this, but there is... I've never met Tom Felton. You've not met Tom No, Felton. he's hiding from me. Have you we spoken to, to him? No. no, he went to London. He went to London. He met James Howard, and he met Australian Draco. And I'm like, okay, fine. All right, you guys have a great time together. That's unbelievable. Okay, so you've never met Tom Felton. You Googled Draco Malfoy. Yeah. The fan culture is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Did you sort of know about any of that before coming in? People are obsessed with Draco. Yeah. Not no. quite in a way No, that I don't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't really at all. But I'm going to go straight home and find out. <laughs> Might scare you. Might yeah, sort of yeah, might give me a new take to play tonight. But J.K. Rowling's actually talked about this, how on some level she was worried that young girls were romanticising Draco. And he's still, I mean, we're obviously going to keep the secrets here. Yeah. I think he is, his journey in Cursed Child, mm -hmm. I think I, on some level she's not helping herself out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. sort of carries yeah. on. We're keeping the secrets, but there is a pro progression to him, which is an interesting place. Do you find that progression, you can always find something new in it, because you've had this job now for a long time. Yeah. And you mentioned the, the banter going mm -hmm. on with, with Ron, but it, is there something new you can take to every show? I'm, I'm surrounded by incredible actors. We're working with an incredible script, and there are certain scenes that I won't go into that I come off and I talk to the, you know, the other actors and we, we still talk about it. And that's incredible to be doing that after three years. Because the show is actually, when it comes down to it, about relationships, yes, mm -hmm. all these magical elements. Yeah. But at the core, it's emotion, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Or well, the books are, the films are, this whole world is. There are incredible themes of light and darkness and love and fathers and sons and all these incredible things that are just universal. And that's why people love this story so much. So final question, mm -hmm. I just want to bring it back to that young boy, Manchester United supporter, young boy. Yeah. What would you like to be able to say to him about his future? 19 years later, let's say. But you know what I mean. <laughs> um, don't take yourself so seriously. Don't take yourself so seriously. Believe that things will work out all right. If you can make it here in New York, you can make it yeah. anywhere, it's going to be okay. But you're not going to play for Manchester United, sadly. Thank you for joining this month's London Calling. See you next time. Cheerio. Cheerio.